Struggling with blood sugar levels, ready to shed those extra pounds effortlessly? Look no further. Sugar Defender, the number one rated blood sugar formula, is here to transform your health and help you achieve your wellness goals. Click the link in the video description to get started with Sugar Defender today. June 17, 1994 was already scheduled to be one of the busiest days on the U.S. sports calendar. Not only were New York Rangers fans celebrating the team's first Stanley Cup victory in more than half a century, but the city's beloved Knicks were squaring off with the Rockets in Houston for Game 5 of the NBA Finals. Throw in Arnold Palmer's final U.S. Open round in his native Pennsylvania, as well as the start of the World Cup in Chicago, and much of the country had its Friday afternoon all scheduled. Then O.J. Simpson dialed 911, leading to an unforgettable spectacle watched by an estimated 95 million television viewers. A beloved NFL star, actor, and football analyst, Simpson stood accused of murdering his ex-wife, Nicole, and her friend Ronald Goldman. But rather than turning himself in, the Heisman winner climbed into the back of his friend and former teammates Ford Bronco for a leisurely paced police chase through the L.A. freeways. Over the ensuing hours, Domino's Pizza would report record sales, ABC anchor Peter Jennings took a prank call on live television, and the country was introduced to the Kardashians. The following is DailyMail.com's look back on Simpson's infamous police chase 30 years later. Simpson passed away in April at 76 following a battle with cancer, but there was no outpouring of grief as one might expect for a Hall of Famer. Instead, his alma mater, the University of Southern California, and the NFL both remained silent on the subject of Simpson's passing. Officially, he was acquitted at his 1994 murder trial, although Simpson was later found responsible for Nicole and Goldman's deaths at a subsequent civil trial. The Juice would later serve nine years in prison after being arrested for forcing his way into a Las Vegas hotel room at gunpoint to retrieve sports memorabilia he claimed to be his. But by then, Simpson's reputation had been tarnished, and despite his frequent attempts to remain in the public eye, Many believed him to be guilty of the 1994 double murder. And it was during that chase when much of America first considered the possibility that O.J. brutally stabbed Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman to death near the entranceway of her Brentwood condominium. June 17, 1994 began with detectives recommending Simpson be charged with two counts of first-degree murder after preliminary testing found Simpson's blood type at the crime scene. Similar evidence would ultimately point to Simpson as well, bloody footprints matching his sized feet, a glove smeared with blood from both victims, his and Nicole's blood found inside his white Ford Bronco. Despite the mounting evidence, Simpson maintained his innocence, claiming he was at home at the time of the slayings and waiting for a limousine to take him to the airport for a red-eye flight to Chicago. Trial testimony from his housemate, Cato Kalin, and the driver would put Simpson's alibi into question, but that information wasn't yet known publicly. The only thing the public did know was that Simpson had flown to Chicago on June 12 the night of the killings, and was summoned home by police the next morning. Most Americans remained torn over Simpson's potential guilt over the ensuing days. After all, Simpson had been repeatedly accused of domestic violence during his seven-year marriage to Nicole. He was even convicted of spousal abuse in 1989, but got off with a fine and probation. Now, though, Simpson's life was hanging in the balance, and with a potential decades-long prison sentence looming, the legendary running back agreed to turn himself into police. Then he started having second thoughts. Upset with his failure to surrender, the LAPD launched a manhunt for Simpson. Meanwhile, attorney Robert Shapiro held a 5 p.m. press conference, where Simpson's friend, Robert Kardashian, revealed a handwritten letter from the missing suspect. It was Kardashian's home where Simpson was last seen before his sudden disappearance. I've had a great life, great friends, read Simpson's letter, which Kardashian shared with media. Please think of the real OJ and not this lost person. Simpson stressed he had nothing to do with Nicole's murder, adding that if we had a problem, it's because I loved her so much. Although his exact location was unclear, police and Simpson's own lawyers believed him to be with his longtime friend and former teammate, A.C. Cowlings. I'm keeping my fingers CR.